Hello and welcome to this uh, very quick uh, demo of uh, getting set up with Spacemax. Spacemax is a community-driven configuration for Emacs, uh, and Emacs is, be, is the classic editor come operating system, which um, is, is an incredibly powerful tool, um, and some people say it's very hard to use, but I believe that using Spacemax makes it uh, very easy uh, and possibly easier than some other tools, especially if you're happy using the keyboard. So how do we get started? Well we have uh, install and we can simply clone uh, the configuration into our, our file space or we can just download the zip as well. Uh, that's perfectly possible. Uh, so I'm going to go to the, the, the um, git root and so we'll clone uh, Spacemax into emacs.d and emacs.d is the default kind of folder for where you keep all your uh, Emacs configuration and so essentially it's going to set up a whole bunch of features and packages for us and so once you've downloaded the Emacs.d all you need to do is actually just run Emacs so I'm going to Emacs I'm going to start up my Emacs it's going to connect to uh, the packaging libraries that uh, are used by uh, Emacs itself and it's asking me a couple of questions. It's asking me if I want to, uh, how I want to actually use Spacemax. Do I want to use it in evil mode, or do I want to use it in uh, holy mode or Emacs mode? Uh, which is, essentially, this is uh, asking me about the editor style. So, do I want to by default use uh, Vim, or by default just use Emacs? If I select Vim, then I get to use either Vim or Emacs. If I just select Emacs, then it, it's only Emacs, there's no Vim installed. So I'm going to install both uh, and use Vim and Emacs. I'm going to use a standard uh, distribution. I'm going to use Helm as well, which again is just a completion framework that helps me find uh, not just commands, but also files and all sorts of other things in there as well. Uh, and it's really powerful, so I'll stick with that. And so now. Uh, this is the only slow part of uh, Spacemax, is, is getting everything downloaded and installed. So it's going to install like over 95, like 94 packages. Uh, and again, these are just standard Emacs packages. But uh, yeah, Spacemax organizes these uh, into layers. So it's actually really easy to just uh, say, I want to use Clojure. You just install the Clojure layer. Uh, and it will install all the packages that are relevant uh, to that layer. And so now we have 94 packages downloaded. It's installed a whole range of packages as well. And it's taken me back to the um, uh, the Spacemax home. And there's a couple of warnings here. So it's saying that um, you can't find the specific fonts. I don't have Source Code Pro, which is the default font that Spacemax uses. So this is the only configuration change I'm actually going to manually make. Um, so I'm going to uh, go into the uh, uh, Spacemax configuration, and to do that I can open up the, the menu just by pressing space, which is where Spacemax gets its name from. And I want a file, so I press F. Uh, it want, it's in the Emacs group of files, and it's the dot file. It's the dot Spacemax file, so I'll press D, uh, and there we go. And I'm into the configuration file. Now I'm in uh, via mode, so I can do uh, forward slash to just do a search, or I could do um, uh, control S if I was in Emacs mode. And then if I do source code pro, there it is, and just uh, find that there. And then I can just simply uh, uh, change word, uh, and then start replacing this with Ubuntu Mono, which is a, a monotype font that's actually on my computer. And I'm going to yeah, maybe increase that to 20, which is a good size for demoing. And just by experience, I'm going to change that to 2, just to make my power line mode, which is this purple, this is bar with a purple bar, um, border around it. That's a power, power line, which shows me lots of information about the files and modes I'm running. Just going to make sure that looks nice by there. So I'm going to save that. Um, so come out of there by pressing FD or Escape. And uh, I can now save this file. Uh, so space, uh, file, save. 
that's saved. And I can um I can reload it. Um actually I just prefer to uh restart if it's a font. Um I prefer to restart uh, Emacs which I do um, space Q for quit and Q again just to actually just uh, quit. I could do restart as well. Uh, and so now we fire up Emacs. Okay, so we're back on the Emacs uh, homepage. And I want to do some development. In this case, I want to do some closure development, but I haven't actually configured Space Max to do closure. Um, uh, I do have a uh, tool that will create a new closure project for me, uh, but that's a command line tool, but I don't want to leave Space Max uh, to run a command line. So I can run a shell with inside uh, Space Max if I want to. So I'm going to press space space, which is also the Emacs equivalent of doing MetaX. Um, and type E shell. And this will launch um, basically a terminal window inside Emacs. And I can change to the relevant uh, the relevant folder and I can create a new project using uh, Liningen. Uh, closure. So Lining is, is the project management tool for Closure. And this will create a, just a simple shell of a project, but it's good enough for this example. Um, so that's done. Um, I can also see the contents. And anything else I want to do in the shell, I can quite easily do. So there we go. Um, so I want to open that file. Um, so uh, let's uh, bring up the space, uh, space max menu. And I want a file, and I want to find the file on my file space. So go in projects. It's under uh, Space Max Closure, and I can press Tab just to complete that. And let's open the project uh, configuration file. There we go. Um, so it's now saying support for closure mode down the bottom here in the mini buffer uh, requires the closure layer. Do I want to install it? Yes, I do. Um, so now it's it's installed that, um, but it hasn't loaded it in yet. Uh, so um, if we uh, uh, so if we basically do we want to file uh, Emacs and reload. Uh, this is now going off, and <coughs> it's going to uh, download all the uh, closure. Uh, packages are in that layer. So after a few moments it's downloaded everything then I'll have a, a working closure environment and I haven't had to go in and configure the the dot space max file in order to get this. Are we done? So now we could uh, basically just type in closure Oops, I can't spell closure mode. Um, and we're in closure. Or if we just opened <coughs> any other file, so we do uh, space find file, uh, let's open the source uh, in the namespace and open the core file. Yes, and then we've got uh, our closure <coughs> environment and it's it's giving us syntax highlighting, it's balancing brackets and so on. Uh, we've got uh, smart parens, so if I open a bracket it's closing stuff. So if I wanted to call foo um, with argument, then uh, it's it's completed the the double quotes, it completed the, it closed the brackets for me uh, for the list, so again it's a lot easier to do uh, structured uh, editing in Closure as well, and it, I also get <coughs> I also get a uh, specific menu for closure mode as well. So if you do Alt and Return or Meta and Return, uh, it brings up a menu that's specific to this mode, and this mode is is closure. So um, I basically want to start a closure REPL. So I'll I'll, I'll run the cider jack in function which is just under single quote and this starts 
<coughs> it starts the server, it's injecting all the dependencies and libraries I need to start a REPL up. So again, the, there's no uh, fiddly com, uh, configuration I need to do for this as well. It just will just will work, work for me. It does take a few seconds to start everything up. Um, uh, it's doing quite a few interesting things in the background, but there it is. It's connected now. And do I want to make an apple pie from scratch? You must first invent the universe. There we go. Uh, and so now I can actually evaluate this code. Um, so I can evaluate it line by line. I can evaluate the whole buffer. And again, I can use that <coughs> that mode specific, that closure mode specific menu. Uh, and so I want to evaluate <coughs> and evaluate the last expression. So the expression before the cursor. So there we go. Uh, um, so we evaluate the namespace. We can evaluate the the function called foo. And then we can actually call foo as well. Um, and, um, so let's uh, let's evaluate foo and see what that does. Uh, and we get nil. <coughs> and we get nil because it's basically print line is pushing something to the uh, the console log, which gets displayed in the uh, the REPL window. And by default, the REPL window isn't shown, but it is there. If we actually go and look at the space menu. Uh, and uh, we can see that um, if we look in the buffer list by doing buffer buffers we can see down here that there is a a cider REPL which we can open uh, alternatively you can also do use the <coughs> closure menu to do uh, the S for, S for cider REPL and switch to the REPL buffer as well so we get uh, a REPL buffer down here, and we can see it's printed out Hello World, Space Max Hello World. Um, and we can, I typically just evaluate things inside uh, the editor window, but you can also evaluate things in the REPL as well. Uh, and all this is working again without having to do any, oops, all this is working without having to do any uh, configuration really, except changing the font. Uh, and a nice little touch <coughs> is um, are these little green bars just down the side um, uh, in the uh, in the fringe of uh, Emacs. Uh, so this is showing that uh, <coughs> def foo has been evaluated. And if I change def foo um, for something, uh, those those little green lines disappear, and I can. Uh, replace it so it gives me a visual indication that I need to reevaluate this function. Um, so do, um, let's reevaluate that, and if I now call space max foo, it will now show that in the editor itself so I can get the results. So that's a very quick, um, so that's a very quick overview of getting up and running with Clojure using Emacs, using space max. Um, it didn't require really any much knowledge. In fact, if I had um, Source Code Pro fonts on my um, uh, on my machine, or if I just ignored that warning, then <coughs> I wouldn't have had to do anything with the Space Max configuration file. So it is really trivial to get going. So I hope you found this useful, and uh, I look forward to doing some more screencasts later on. Thank you.